So good morning everybody. This is Carlos again. Sorry about the uh, long hiatus for me. It's been the longest I've spent without running for a long time. Last time I ran was when I spoke to last on Sunday. And now it's Thursday and I'm running in England in Sussex the flight across the Atlantic was pretty boring if you must say I must say it was the worst stretch of 10 hours I've ever spent, basically. I was on the window seat. So, every time I needed to get up, I pretty much had to wake up two women so I could get out of my seat. But, uh, as they say, you pay for what you get and with a budget ticket you don't get very much so England is just beginning to recover from about a month and a half of exceptional rain there's been a lot of flooding I can see blue sky up ahead, just cracks of blue in amongst the lead grey of the clouds. When we came into Gatwick, we came down from about 20,000 feet and it was solid cloud from about 10,000 down to about 400 feet didn't see the the ground until we were virtually on the ground. The thick layer of cloud was incredible. So my brother drives a taxi in Haywards Heath and uh, he's been happily doing that for the last 15 years he likes being self-employed I've chosen to run on some of the quieter country lanes because uh, the ground is just too muddy I still haven't attended the wedding which was the reason I came to England. I really don't need to get too wet or muddy before that. And then the day after the wedding, I'm off to Spain, where I can enjoy myself running on the trails and the beach. My feet are still a little bit tender, but uh, I haven't warmed up yet. I've only been running for about six minutes. It's quite mild, actually. It's probably about eight or nine degrees Celsius. Quite an abundance of bird sounds almost on cue they start to chirp ok 
Okay, now I have a bit of a dilemma. The path that I'm on has led me to a farm. I remember this from last year. Now, once I head out onto this, no, I don't think I'll do this today. I don't need to get my shoes too wet. So I'll stay on the road. But this is where the footpath system kicks in. And uh, I would continue in my direction, but across a farmer's field onto the East Sussex footpath. That happens to wake up the dog. Hello! Gotta be careful with farm dogs. They're trained to uh, scare away Canadian runners. <laughs> I'm not too concerned about my route today as long as I stay dry. I just need to get some time on my feet. The other thing I have to be careful with here is that the cars drive on the wrong side of the road. For me, I have to be super careful when I cross a road to look the right way. Well, I managed to find everything I needed for breakfast this morning without waking the whole household which was nice oh, here comes the person with the dog hello hi, hi dog <laughs> this reminds me of a show that I listened to on the internet radio called The Archers. It's the longest running soap opera. I think it's been going 80 years. It's all about a simple story about country folk based around a family of farmers called the Archers. The sky's getting brighter. This is good. running towards a village. I think this is called Skeynes Hill. I'm not too far away from Steve Chopper's domain. I think he lives near Hastings. a feeling of being hot and out of breath. I am running up a hill.
trees are all bare, there's not too many evergreens in this part of England. It's mainly just deciduous trees. I'm going to have to pull off the road in a second because it's only wide enough for one car and there's one car heading towards me. Yep, a 4x4 four four Toyota truck, even in England. Toyota truck. When I get to the road, I'm going to have to probably pause my recording because it can get pretty noisy here. With the roads being so narrow and so busy, the main roads are always busy here. So that would be 10 a.m. So I just got my official first UK soaker. I just had to step into a puddle. I had no choice. Water everywhere. So one foot is now officially wet. So I've turned off the main road and now back on a country lane. Running past a field with a couple of pretty hairy looking horses wearing their warm up gear. This might well lead me into somebody else's farmyard, but we'll see. I'm exploring a few of the neighborhood lanes up and uphill and down dale, as they say. crossing with a public footpath but it looks kind of muddy so I'll stay on the pavement or as they call it here the road the pavement is what they call the sidewalk an interesting development. They have these large cement cones about the size of a I don't know, garbage pail maybe, pointed, somewhat pointed. I think it's to stop cars from driving off the pavement, off the Asphalt, I should say, the roadway. You go to the pheasant. Now I'm running past a field of what look like Angus cattle. I have my GPS working here. I tried something out on the plane that I was curious to know what would happen if I fired up my GPS when I was at 50,000 feet 
traveling at 400 miles an hour. But uh, for some reason I got no signal. It's probably the aircraft was screening any satellite signals. Well, the good thing about having my GPS today is that I can always follow my path back from where I started. So, I guess I should say hi to my friends back in Canada and the US. Hi Derek. Hello Sandy. Apparently she's missing me already. Every time she thinks of running, she thinks of the jackal. And I'm not around for her. Yep, this looks like another one of those no through roads. The choice is either to go back the way I came or to run on the mud in the fields. So I'm going back the way I came, exploring yet another side lane. In the summer, these wouldn't be no throughways. They would be leading down to farms and then you would have to go across fields to continue on the public footpath system. All these public footpaths are pretty much ancestral ways of getting from one village to another so the farms have to put up with public access so I guess I've been out about maybe 30 minutes so far lots of cars this would be farmers and their employees and their family mainly most of these farms would be family farms. But like the archers. So and now they know there is a runner in their neighborhood. Hi Norman, how are you? I hope you're enjoying learning all about your voice recorder. I have a feeling that he probably, or I should say you, because I am talking to you, Norman. I have a feeling that you're holding the recorder a little close to your mouth, which catches your speech very well, but it also catches every other noise that you make. I find it better to hold it more like at waist level. For two reasons. It means that you have to enunciate a little bit more and less of the conspiratorial whispering and also it catches more of the ambient sound, the footsteps 
and birds and other people around you. So I'm getting back to that busy road again, so I'll pause once again. Welcome to East Sussex, it says here. Oh, this is a quieter section here. This is good. Mind you, this seems to be like a stream. Like a stream running down the side of the road. Given a couple of days, I think this area will dry out. So I'm now heading towards Chaley Common Nature Reserve. Romney Ridge, nice names. I think if there are street markings, then I can assume that the roads go through. But when there's just a side road, it's probably a dead end. Okay, so this is Chaley Common. They're not used to seeing people running on the road here. So once again, I'm on a mystery tour, which is fine, I can take my time getting back. I'm just a little bit spooked by the speed and size of traffic on these tiny roads. Local garbage truck, Pound Common. Let's try this one. Certainly, the weather is getting better, which is great. Hi. Yep, I think I'm going to have to go across the field here, otherwise I'll be dodging trucks again. My shoes are just going to have to get muddy. Chaley Common Nature Reserve. There are usually poor lands close to, close to. They are usually poor land close to a village owned privately, but over which the local peasantry can has rights such as wood and bracken cutting, as well as grazing. This resulted in overuse and impoverishment of the soils, leading to the heathland we see today. The name Chaley derives from the Anglo-Saxon chag, meaning gorse, and lee meaning field. That's interesting. Romney Ridge, Hayward's Heath. 
Okay, well, I'll explore for a little further and then I'll backtrack or try and navigate. Well, you can hear it is quite sticky, sticky mud that I'm having to deal with here. On a dry day, this would be beautiful for running on. I can feel the wind on me, so I'm pretty sure that the mic's going to be picking up a fair amount of wind noise today. So I'll keep this first recording pretty short. It's just a matter of stretching my legs basically. Well that's not bad, I've been out about an hour, 51 minutes actually. I've done seven and a half kilometers. So I will probably have a, about an hour and a half Maybe an hour 45 on the clock by the time I'm done. Who knows how long it's going to take me to get back. So now I have well and truly christened my new shoes with English mud. I'm hoping this road will eventually bring me around back to where I started. I'll give it another 20 minutes. So I'm now on Slugwash Lane heading towards Skeynes Hill. I've made a loop out of my run and the sun has come out. It's really quite pleasant now. Balding's Barn. That's a good name. Balding's Barn. Okay, Slugwash Lane. I think I've got about two miles of Slugwash Lane and it will bring me out onto the Lewis Road and my brother lives on the Lewis Road. The name rings a bell, so I think I have been on Slow Wash Lane before. After having gone through that marshy area, now I'm less reluctant to use the public footpaths because my shoes and socks are now wet and muddy. But uh, now I'm looking for clean puddles to wash the mud off my shoes before I get back. I think I've gone back into West Sussex. I know that my brother lives very close to the border between East and West Sussex. I've been out over an hour now, probably an hour twenty of running. I'm not too concerned about it. This is just a clearing out the cobwebs run. This is more like it. Away from the traffic once again. Back to the bird sounds. behind me. Up, up, up. I've 
feel quite tired today. I'm not sure why. It's probably jet lag. I woke up last night at 2 a.m. Who knows what time that was. Oh, okay. It says here, private road to the White House. Not the White House, but the White House here. So I've seen some interesting things today on my run. I've seen pheasants, I've seen sheep, I've seen Angus cattle, I've seen horses wearing coats. I've interacted with a few locals mainly just to confirm my navigation. The worst thing is asking somebody who's not sure and they start to waffle on about things. Maybe it's to the... No, hang on. No, it's... You keep going. Yeah. Those are the kind of people that you really don't want to spend too much time talking to as they really don't know. Mind you, I would class myself in that category because I quite often get confused when I'm giving people directions. Yeah, up ahead there's a rather large electricity pylon stepping its way across the countryside. I believe I ran under that about an hour ago on the other side. So that is always a good position finding device. If you see a power line, you know that pretty much it's going to be the only major power line in the area. So cross it once, you see it again, you know you're somewhere along its path, maybe a couple of pylons to the left or to the right of where you crossed it before. I think the slugwash lane will bring me out onto the public footpath. I'm going to take a picture here, just as a reminder of where I am. Slugwash Kennels, Cattery and Grooming Parlour. Moore's Cottage. So this is the running jackal with his first report on his trip to Europe. First part is Sussex with my brother and Saturday I'll be at my niece's wedding and then on Sunday I fly to sunny Spain to see my mother. So bye-bye. Have a great day everybody.